Thank you, Your Honour. In the spirit of speakers who have come before me, who are not experts in MAID, but who feel passionately about this issue, allow me to also take a few minutes to offer some reflections on the bill before us. Senator Platt has given us a good summary of how we got here in his account of Bill C-7 two years ago, underscoring the fact that the government itself did not want medical assistance in dying for mental illness, where it's the sole underlying medical condition, to be part of our MAID regime. It was in this chamber that we put forward the removal, the proposed removal of the exclusion of mental illness as the sole underlying mental condition, and that amendment was ultimately adopted. In the debate around that amendment to remove the exclusion, there were two arguments against, uh, two arguments for removal. The first was that the exclusion of mental illness was unconstitutional. It was essentially discriminatory. And the second argument was that the medical profession already had the tools and the capacity to do capacity assessment of patients with mental illness as the sole underlying condition. Both of these arguments would have been sufficient for us to reject the exclusion. Indeed, the first argument of unconstitutionality would have been a slam dunk. But we chose to go a different route. And what we chose instead was to delay the implementation of MADE for SUMC in the belief that the medical profession did not yet have all the tools and procedures for proper capacity assessment in the case of MADE SUMC. The agreed delay period in the end was 24 months, and that proposal was described euphemistically by many as a sunset clause. I thought at the time that the image of sunset was not helpful for a variety of reasons, but in particular because sunsets are inevitable and essentially unchangeable. Whereas the nature of the task that we gave to the medical profession for this 24-month 20 uh, period did not lend itself into a fixed time frame. I prefer the image of a runway where the purpose of a delay was to prepare an aircraft for takeoff. In this imagery, we have to ask not just whether the plane is ready for flight, but also if the runway is long enough. As I put it in my February 9, 2021 speech, quote, what if the plane is not ready to take off in 18 months? What if the problem is not about training more people or aligning standards, but it is about sorting out difficulties and challenges that the profession itself has in coming to terms with how they do capacity assessment. Colleagues, I would ask the same question today on the eve of our vote on this bill. The difference this time around, I believe, is that the expectation around the extension, the one-year extension, is framed more narrowly as a technical question of putting in place protocols and training materials and the two other criteria that Senator Kutcher referred to and that those things can be done within the 12-month period. To that extent, I'm reasonably certain that the MAID SUMC aircraft will take off on March 17, 2024. The runway will be long enough for Flight C-39, and it will take off, but I am not sure that it will have as many passengers on board as it should. The reason, colleagues, is that there continues to be profound disagreement among doctors on the question of irremediability. Distinguished experts have lined up on both sides of this debate. If you were hoping, as I was, for the original 24-month delay to provide scientific clarity on irremediability, you will be disappointed. If anything, the divide between the two views 
is as wide as ever, inflamed in part by media reporting about made cases that seem to be egregious in violation of the very safeguards that were put in place. That is why, honourable colleagues, I believe the debate on made SUMC this time around is focusing so much more on the rights and autonomy of Canadians with mental illness as a sole medical, sole underlying medical condition, rather than on medical evidence of irremediability. In his testimony to honourable senators just yesterday, Minister Lametti used the word autonomy on multiple occasions as a core reason for allowing me to be accessible in the case of mental illness as a sole underlying medical condition. Now, it should not surprise us that the Minister of Justice, who is a distinguished legal scholar, to focus on constitutional rights. And there are indeed arguments in favour of made SUMC based on constitutional protections for such patients. I would note, however, echoing Senator Platt, that such arguments have not yet been offered by the courts, which is a point the Minister conceded during QP yesterday. What is curious, though, is that made advocates who are not lawyers but who are doctors are also increasingly basing their case on legal arguments such as equality and non-discrimination rather than on the medical evidence of irremediability that they surely have much more expertise in than us mere mortals. Which suggests to me that the direction in which we are heading on made in general, and we can be sure that this is not the last made bill that we will debate, the direction in which we are heading on made in general is a focus on the rights of Canadians to determine their time of death and less on the conditions under which that should happen. Grievous and irremediable may well continue to be embedded in our law as a formal condition for MAID. But as we can see in the debate over MAID for SUMC, it will go ahead, even in cases where irremediability is disputed, albeit subject to safeguards. What will happen after March 17, 2024, is that made for mental illness, SUMC, will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. But as I suggested in my question to the ministers yesterday, anyone seeking made will seek an, ass an assessor who is predisposed to approve the request. In any case, it is almost certain that any assessor would agree with the proposition that some mental illnesses are irreme irremediable or they would not be assessors in the first place. From an autonomy perspective, this is as it should be. And again, it is why I think we are going to see more and more of the autonomy argument and less emphasis on medical evidence of grievousness and irremediability. You may recall I asked a question to ministers yesterday about a scenario whereby a patient in this situation of SUMC requesting MAID is, uh, is, uh, is given uh, authorization, uh, but where there is another medical professional who knows the patient, not part of the assessment team, giving an alternate view, and whether that alternate view from an expert not on the assessment team would carry any weight in the decision. We did not receive a full answer, not because the ministers were prevaricating, we, we ran out of time, but I think, I'm sure, this scenario will play out after March 2024. And my guess is that the medical experts who are not part of the assessment team will have little or no say in the made decision of a patient requesting that procedure. 
In this sense, the bias will be in favor of personal autonomy rather than medical evidence. Uh, since Senator Kutcher, Kutcher has cautioned us against slippery slope arguments, let me reassure him that I am not scaremongering that this bill will lead to an avalanche of requests for bail, or that made is the same as suicide. I agree with him that in the near term, the numbers of Canadians requesting and obtaining made will continue to be small relative to the size of our population. But I am signaling to all of us here that there is a discernible shift in the reasoning behind arguments for made from reasonably foreseeable death to grievous and irredeemable condition to autonomy. We already know that reasonably foreseeable death is no longer a factor, and irredeemability remains. Depending on your point of view, the focus on autonomy, perhaps even as the principal or only criterion for decisions on made, is a good thing. We have heard as much in this chamber. This is no slippery slope argument, but there are shifting sands. We cannot and should not close our eyes to where the sands are shifting us to and whether we want to go there. Colleagues, I invite all of us to reflect on this question before the next made bill arrives in the Senate. Thank you.